The tech sector leading the comeback this week. The rally led by chipmakers Broadcom, Supermicro, and NVIDIA. Here to share other opportunities in the tech space, Alger Executive VP and Portfolio Manager Anker Crawford joins me here at Post 9. Uh, we've had a bit of a reset, in at least psychology, in, with regard to the mega cap tech stocks. They led us in the first half of this year. You've had some churn and sideways action. It seems like the market wants to be more discerning about winners and losers and what we're paying for these things. Big picture, the AI story, all the thematic elements of it. Um, has it caused you to reassess anything or not? Not really. I mean, and in part, if you believe in where AI is going and the idea that AI in, at some point, whether it's three, four, five years out, is going to provide us with, you know, superhuman intelligence, um, you know, all of the, the CapEx that's being spent today is wholeheartedly justifiable because the opportunity to monetize that AI at that period of time is is beyond, I think, what anyone has really contemplated in the market so mm -hmm. far. And let's, I mean, just to point to NVIDIA in particular, obviously there have been these periods before where it kind of, you know, consolidates for three months and people wonder if you can actually extrapolate the demand growth into next year and beyond. Um, what have you heard from them uh, recently? And I guess how are you mentally modeling it out in terms of how long this can last? Yeah, so I think there's many different ways and many different vectors of, of growth for NVIDIA. Um, and the slope can change in any, any given year. However, so, so let's, let's just go back to what happened at the, at the earnings call. Yeah. Earnings call, the numbers didn't go up. And it was the first time in, I think, seven quarters that the numbers haven't gone up for NVIDIA. The stock comes in, as people are saying, 2025 is peak. Goldman Sachs conference. Um, which was just this past yeah. week. Jensen gets on stage and talks about how COAS capacity has to grow in 2025, but it also has to grow in 2026. That basically marked the bottom for the stock, and the stock went from 104 to 120, where it is today. Yeah. So, you know, it is very sensitive to the growth trajectory of 2026 and whether or not 26 will be a growth year. Now, in our opinion, given how much CapEx needs to be spent, 25 is not peak CapEx. Mm -hmm. We think 25, 26, 27, and potentially 28 are going to be big CapEx years for all of the hyperscalers. Really? Um, it was interesting to me to hear Larry Ellison from Oracle talk about AI on, the, on their conference call, uh, where you know he kind of had some impatience about this question of how are we going to get paid for these products. And he essentially says it's going to be everything. It's like everything we do is essentially going to be built around these AI technologies. Um, which is interesting to me, except it also goes back to this idea, well, technology always gets better and faster and cheaper. So how is this different right now? Or is it just an accelerated phase of it? Yeah, I, and we have to have like an hour to have <laughs> know, that discussion. Um, but I think in, in a nutshell, and, and I'm going to, this is going gonna, gonna to sound a little bit Terminator-esque. Yeah. So bear with me. But if you can have a coworker that has equivalent intelligence to you, and it can be effectively your foil and do everything that you need it to do and then some. Um, how much would you pay for that coworker? So if Microsoft, for example, opens up that opportunity for, for the world or for enterprises, mm -hmm. how much are you willing to pay for that coworker? Is it $40,000 a year, $50,000 a year? Right? And, and that coworker works 24-7. Yeah. So today Microsoft monetizes at a rate of about $1,000 per seat. So the opportunity is 50-fold. So when you put it in, in that kind of context, um, you know, the, the big picture on AI is that we're about, it's a, it's a complete transformation of the technology and how we use it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the part that sometimes gets lost um, in, in this AI kind of, are we, what, is it a trade, are we a peak, are we? Sure. Because the end point is very, very different um, than I think the market thinks. So it's not just the same. And we hope nobody comes from the future to try and, you know, hunt somebody <laughs> down like in the Terminator. I do know that you, um, in sort of less uh, cosmic terms, have found interesting ideas in, in narrower, narrow, narrowly focused companies. App Lovin, for example, I was noticing that move this week. Tell me a kind of thumbnail of that, of that story. Yeah, so App Lovin is a platform. It's a gaming advertising platform. And um, they're using AI in order to 
you know, basically make you download more games and they can monetize their inventory better than anyone else can. They have 70% market share and they're going into e-commerce as well. So instead of serving you up a game, they'll serve you up a product mm -hmm. and are able to mon monetize their inventory even better than they've been able to do before. Um, interesting because all of their cost structure is already embedded. And so for every dollar of revenue they get, they get a, almost 100% fall through on the, on the margin line. So massively cash flow generative. Um, the street has $6 in earnings in 2026. And um, the stock is, I think, 100 and 111. Yeah, we're just 111 today. Right there, yeah. um, but we think those numbers are too low. Hmm. And um, they, again, they they generate massive amounts of cash. And it's a real U-turn from like a round trip from shortly after its IPO. I know it kind of had a rough patch, and now it's all the yeah, way. Yeah, it was a, it was kind of a different business yeah. when it IPO'd. And the uh, we just met with the CEO um, yesterday and. First of all, what a what a phenomenal CEO mm -hmm. um, with a great command of the of the business, but also had the wherewithal to understand that he needed to pivot his business, mm -hmm. and he's pivoting pivoting it again. So um, yeah, we yeah. we love it. Thirty-seven billion dollar uh, market cap. Uh, all right, Encore. Great to have you. Good to talk to you.